It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Thorat's here. Mary Jo's Foley is here. We're going to talk about Microsoft's big consumer push and what Discord might bring to the table. Some news about Windows 10 version 20H2 and 21H1 and some Xbox news plus a new cocktail. It's all coming up next on Windows Weekly. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therott and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 718. Recorded Wednesday, March 31st, 2021. If Nana only knew. This episode of Windows Weekly is brought to you by Podium. Find out how Podium can help your business reach more customers. Get started free today at podium.com slash WW. And by ESET. ESET protects businesses worldwide with internet security products and services backed by world-class research and tech support. For more expert advice and cybersecurity training tips, check out ESET online at business.eset.com slash train. It's time for Windows Weekly. Time to talk about Microsoft with these two right here on your left. Paul Therott of therott.com uh, and author of many a book. Probably not a huge market for the Dell 5.3 Super Bible, but <laughs> the field guide to Windows 10 is all right. And he's yeah, got I'm looking into a GoFundMe campaign for that one. But <laughs> You know what? There, there are lots of people still use Delphi, right? So, uh, yeah, there probably are. Yeah, no, I know there are. Yeah. I hear from them. Sure. So, and I don't, I don't know. Is is the Delphi three Super Bible uh, out of date? I'm so far removed from Delphi right now. I couldn't even <laughs> wrap my head around this. We we'll call it the super. What is this super perfect Bible. language? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Also, Mary Jo Foley from ZDNet, all about Microsoft. Dot com. Hello, you two. Hello. My new PC Hello. comes tomorrow. I'm so excited. Oh, right. Ooh, what did you this get? This is the uh, affordable non-gaming class PC that you bought? No. <laughs> this is the, oh, the big boy. The big oh, boy. Oh, the other one. <laughs> fact, I don't, yeah. you guys don't do this, but but way back when, remember uh, Jerry Pornell's Chaos Manor? He Are named me? Yeah, I mean, it was like, it was what I, I have his, the, the books that are, I have, first of all, Byte Magazine's right behind me, but yes. I also have uh, the book compilations of these columns, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Ezekiel. Yeah, that's the thing. He named all his computers. And I have not been doing that. I think that's a little twee, personally. <laughs> do you name your computers? Well, I, I do for networking purposes. That's but I, why I, I have to. Exactly. Yeah, I don't I don't give them cute names like Robbie and, <laughs> you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Um, I thought I should probably do that uh, for exactly well, that reason. I SSH into this computer here. So the yeah. prompt on this computer, the server here is Beast. Because I said this yeah. is going to be a beast. No, but computer. you want something that, uh, you know, you know if, you go you're up, if, if you're a Microsoft guy and you have Windows PCs, I mean, you can go up to your Microsoft account website, go to the devices page, or whatever it's called. You can see the names of all these things. If it says laptop dash WZX, whatever. It's not useful. You have no idea right. what that is. Yeah. So I have in the past just been giving it the name of the device, you know, XPS 13, yes. that kind of stuff. That's right. sufficient. Yeah. But I thought, I, I spent oh, a lot right. of money on I this guy. Wait. So what are you going to call this thing? Well, I have notes. I'm thinking. <laughs> Big Bertha. Yeah, something. Cause what it's, are we thinking? So there's, it's got, th I was thinking, what are your, what are the attributes? Mm -hmm. um, it's very powerful. It's a, a, mm -hmm. a Ryzen 7 a Zen architecture, the 5800. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a, it's a GeForce GT, uh, an NVIDIA GeForce GTX uh, 3080. Uh, by the way, I was stunned that I was able to get these yeah because you can't get them on the open market otherwise people say why don't you that build video your own? card alone must cost what a thousand bucks didn't so ask I, didn't ask yeah okay <laughs> don't okay. want to know it's gonna be up there right it's gonna it's, be up there yeah, somewhere yeah and it's heavily scalped so yes. um i figured if i get it from dell and they said may but all mm -hmm. of a sudden i get yeah, this right. FedEx, it's been really it's, early it's coming That's tomorrow fantastic. so nice. i'm thrilled wow so it's very powerful mm -hmm. um it's powerful it's, human is it huge it must be huge it's big and the monitor is yeah. 55 inches Oh, <laughs> so right. so big, powerful, and there's one mm -hmm. other thing. It is unfortunately uh, in all the reviews, and I got the water cooled or yeah, liquid cooled loud. version, but it's loud. Then I have the name. Ooh. Somebody, <laughs> somebody B said B fifty two. B fifty two. I like it. Ooh, See, that's good. I that's like good. it. It's a little lumbering. I was thinking something yeah. along maybe an elephant name, like yeah. uh, Tantor, which is what Tarzan. Tantor. Has, <laughs> elephants. 
right. or a Simba, but that's a lot. I just go Trantor, which is the name Horton? of the planet in the Foundation series. Horton. Horton. I was Horton. thinking Horton. about Horton. Horton's Horton. cute. <laughs> like Horton hears it. No, no, it's, you need something that evokes power, shock and awe. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Somebody said, call it the Studebaker. Too many <laughs> letters, but I think apt, right. but too many letters. So I want something short. What about what about Ryzen Master? Ooh. <laughs> Yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> something with the Ryzen in it. Yeah. Yeah. Something with the Ryzen in it. Yeah. There's got to be a, a Ryzen joke like Cold Moon Ryzen. <laughs> I hear a. <laughs> or something. A loud yeah. fan Ryzen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I'm I, I'm glad it's arriving on my day off because I. That's I, cool. In fact, that's I have to warn Lisa I won't be around. Right. Uh, right. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll be I'll be seeing you because it's also a gaming machine. I mean, that's kind of the big, sure. the main point of it. So, uh, and also should make a programming note. I will be gone next week. Oh no! Uh, well, I'll be playing with my computer. All no, uh, we're oh, Lisa and I finally thought you know it's probably time to get out of town. So we're going to go over to Calistoga. Yeah. Last time we went, it burned down. Mm -hmm. We had to come well, home. Um, so we're what's hoping. What's going to happen next week? We're hoping there will. If How you do you hear, think the people of Calistoga feel about your trip? Uh, <laughs> yeah, don't come. No, seriously. Last time Hail we arrived storm. at the hotel, and they said, <laughs> yeah. "Yeah, we think you should go back home. We're oh, going to be evacuated wow. any day wow. now." And the, and in fact, it didn't burn down that time, but the next wildfire, it did burn down the whole wow. place. So. The hotel did. Yeah. Wow. That's not where we're going, obviously. <laughs> How? Uh, yeah. <laughs> they have uh, yeah, you know, yurts now outside <laughs> yeah, somewhere. Yeah. Um, we, uh, how far? How far is this from where you live? Oh, it's not. It's an hour, maybe forty-five yeah, minutes. Well. It's not far. It's like going to Natick. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Going up to the Cape. Nadic. We're going up to the Cape. That's Natick it. is yeah. Uh, yeah. It was probably about thirty minutes away. Yeah, it's like that. Here, it's like that. Yeah. Dead, dead them to it's like two natics. It's like a couple of natics. It's not quite an hour. It's pretty quick. Just, right. But it's Napa Valley. So we're in Sonoma. It's over the hill yeah. to Napa. It's not yeah. bad. Nice. And, you know, yeah, the food's good. The wine's good. Nice. There's yep. a nice, uh, nice, uh, it's a, the Calistoga was named Calistoga after Saratoga Springs in New York, mm -hmm. as you know, the big hot springs. Mm -hmm. um, the guy who started it, Brannon was his name, said it's going to be the Saratoga of California. Hence, wow. Calistoga. And That's they have a hot springs, beautiful hot springs. So the pool at the hotel we're going in is, uh, is, is fed by the hot springs. So it's really nice. Mm -hmm. It's really nice. warm and beautiful. Hmm. Anyway, there's my story. So uh, uh, I think Mike will be doing the show. You know, people like it when Micah does the show. We don't really like that guy too much. <laughs> oh, um, I said people, He's an not Apple you. guy, but, you know. <laughs> but That's kind of fun. It. He has Elvis. He has a surface. And, <laughs> yeah. He does. No, we yeah. love Mike. So, Mike, I'll be doing the show this uh, next week, and I'll be back the okay. week after. We'll have uh, let's get into Microsoft's big consumer push. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, consumer push, question mark? Question mark? Yeah. What is that all yeah. about? So, you know, we, we talk a lot about how terrible Microsoft is in the consumer space, other than in gaming. We talk about that a lot on this show, how they've dropped a lot of the products that made people fans, you know, like... Windows Phone and the At band. least no one holds a grudge, you know? Yeah, no one that. holds a grudge, right. <laughs> but, you know, there's there's some rumblings about them trying to make another go at the consumer market, or I should say the prosumer market, um, especially because right. during the pandemic, they saw a lot of success around gaming, and they're like, you know what, what if we could just kind of parlay that into more of a consumer push and kind of get back on the track of building up our consumer business. So hmm. there, it was back in, I was looking it up today, 2018 at Inspire, their partner conference, Yusuf Mehdi got up on the stage and he said, you know, we've lost some of the consumer magic. He admitted this to the private audience, you know, and he said, we have this initiative, it's called Modern Life. You know how they have modern work for for Microsoft right. 365? They've got, on the consumer side, modern life. And so they were, had this whole idea where they could build up consumer love, and it kind of fizzled. Like, yeah, they fielded things like teams for consumers and did a couple small things like that. But they haven't really done much, right? And now suddenly right. we start hearing about Discord, and we start hearing about some of the things going on with the creators and LinkedIn and and you put two and two together and you're like, maybe they're going to take another run at this, right? <laughs> Will mm. they be successful? I don't know, but I feel like they haven't given up and um, 
they have ideas, especially around things like learning, not learnings, learning, you know, <laughs> that where they could, right. they could use things like LinkedIn learning and not make it not just a work thing, but maybe give people a way to do more learning at home um, for their own kind of their own personal edification, not just, you know, to learn a course for work. So there, there are these little hints around the edges where I feel like maybe maybe they're going to try again to build up their consumer presence. Here, here's the problem I have with this. Um, they've just never fall uh, gone through with anything, right? With I mean, I know. A, a year ago this month, they had their Microsoft 365 consumer event, remember? Yep. And they uh, I know you remember, but <laughs> the people. <laughs> I don't remember. Um, do I don't remember. know if you guys were around for this, but. Uh, I, I kind of um, remember that. <laughs> sorry. I know you remember. But uh, <laughs> but they announced, you know, they rebranded it, right? It was Office 365 before that. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. They talked up a bunch of stuff. And there were some rumors about things. Remember, we had the password uh, manager rumors, which uh, turned into something involving Credge and um, mm -hmm. uh, Microsoft Authenticator. But, you know, th that was kind of it, right? Like, they, they announced that. Yeah. Uh, it took them a long time to implement those features they talked about. I, I don't even know if all of them are there. What, what Wasn't one of them yeah. the ability to write in a Excel cell with a pen or something and mm -hmm. have that actually work or whatever? I don't know that that ever happened or whatever. Um and then, you know, it just kind of drifts off, you know, and I, I, I feel like this is this is what they used to do in gaming. Every once in a while, Microsoft would poke its head up out through the you know, hole in the ground yeah. and look around and be yeah. like, OK, let's do uh, <laughs> we're going to do something, uh, uh, you know, like Xbox Live on Windows, except we're going to call it Games for Windows Live for some reason. And then they released like two or three games and then they mm -hmm. fell off the face of the earth again. And, you know, like they mm -hmm. they tend to the do follow this. through has been terrible. Right. It's it been has. tough. Yeah. Yeah, it has. It has. I don't know. I, I feel like. You know how we keep hearing Windows is back, baby, and they have this all <laughs> sure. this idea like sure they really want to show people that Windows has a future. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's wrapped up in this consumer push because, okay, they, they've already made the case and shown that people need Windows PCs for work. But people mm -hmm. at home still aren't very excited about Windows PCs by and large. I mean, our listenership is, obviously. But yeah. normal people, like if you're like, hey, you, do you want to get a new PC? Eh, maybe. Maybe. This is not you a know. lot of there there, I think, for <laughs> yeah. consumers, right? Unless you're right. just talking about the web, in which case, why are you even using a mm -hmm. computer? And, yeah. You know, at that point, a Mac yeah. or a Chromebook or right. whatever would work just Anything. as well. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I, 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 I'm just feeling and hearing like bits and pieces that make me think they're going to... Hmm. They're going to use this year to try to make more of a consumer push. And so if you look at what they already have, like when they think about what do we have in the consumer space? You know, we know they have Microsoft 365 for home users, for the personal package and the family package, right? Um, they've got teams for consumers that we just referenced. They've got Bing and ads and search and the new weather and news feed thing that they're building into Windows 10. Um yeah. They've got some of the um, personal features they're putting in Credge, like that mm -hmm. uh, kids mode thing. So they've got, yeah, they've even got collections, stuff, you know. right? I would also yeah. add to this, by the way, just some hardware stuff. Um, Surface, mm -hmm. I would put into this category. It's mm -hmm. kind of a crossover. I know it's probably bigger yeah. with businesses, but it's a, it's yeah, the closest it's they've ever come to a homegrown enthusiast brand in recent years, for sure. Yep. And then, of course, Xbox. I know you mentioned we have video games, but I mean, yeah. Xbox is expanding out to include all these subscription services and so forth. What about the theory, which we, we were talking about this on Sunday on Twitter, actually, that instead of really having a consumer business, they're promoting consumer businesses that support their real business, which is... yeah. Yes. The network and... So I yeah, look at that. At, see, I always think of Microsoft. I saw, you know, Xbox is the one thing that blows us out of the water. Yeah, because I think hardware, of Microsoft. But, but, but Xcloud well, does but, not, but it's, right? But it's literally entertainment, right? So I would say aside mm -hmm. from that stuff, Microsoft's biggest strength, you know, to generalize greatly, is what I would call productivity, right? Right. Um, and it's, uh, we, we as a, a, you know, we're a person that works at a company that gets worked, whatever the work is we do every day, there, there's that work. But we also have work that we kind of do just on our own uh, mm -hmm. or, or a need to be productive or efficient or whatever it is. And I, I, I think this, you know, their central, Chris uh, Capicella says this all the time. Microsoft yeah. has been saying this for years, you know, consumers 
also go to work and they, they, they're mm -hmm. knowledge workers perhaps, or some form of work or whatever it is. I mean, people who are at work are still consumers when they're at home and this crossover there, right? But they just can't, they're just not good at grabbing that part of the market. Yeah. Um, I think that they've done a great job with personal productivity, things like Microsoft 365 mm -hmm. uh, for consumer. Um, I, I just necessary for so many people, whether you're a student or an adult or whatever, and, you know, they're, they're not fun. <laughs> you know, they're not yeah. entertainment. Yeah. Um, they're not quibby. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever, yeah, yeah. Uh, thank God. Um, but <laughs> but but, do you but, think but that's the, that's who they are, right? Isn't that what Microsoft yeah. is? Right. I know. I feel like yep. I know. I feel like they're. I mean, it's just a why, mindset. I mean, yeah. Why even stress over this? Yeah, it doesn't you know? matter. But um, I feel like they really. I mean, Microsoft stress over it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But I feel like they yeah, do. Yeah. I feel like this is a they do. The elusive oh, they goal they think about that it. they've had for yeah, yeah. I, they, I, they I feel yeah. like circling Nadella around. Nadella is because he's an Azure guy and a network guy, and he's always yeah. said yeah. we want to be wherever our customers are, which implies we don't really care. We're hard, hardware agnostic. Mm -hmm. uh, that all of I don't know. I still think of even Xbox, even Surface, as mm -hmm. less of a business and more of a, an example of what you would do with Microsoft stuff. It, it's um, it's. Fan service <laughs> is what it is mm -hmm. in a way, right? It's uh, because, yeah, you know, uh, Microsoft shouldn't care if you're a Microsoft 365 subscriber, if you're using a Mac, an iPad, a Chromebook, or a Windows PC. Mm -hmm. They shouldn't care. They know you're not using a Windows phone, so th there's that audience, right? They shouldn't mm -hmm. care. The, the people who do buy Xbox hardware, the people who do buy Surface PCs are also doing that other stuff, right? They're paying for the subscriptions. They're... They're uh, you know fully invested. They're they're bigger Microsoft fans or people or whatever you want to call those folks. They in uh, to me are more important. Well, uh, that's maybe it's a tough way to say it, but uh, are they're they're more fully invested in the ecosystem, you know, and maybe they deserve a little more attention um, or whatever. But I, I, yeah. but those people exist for sure. But I I just don't believe that the end goal for Microsoft is to get more and more people into that bucket that. They're really shooting for the masses here. They want to go to a corporation and say, we want all of your users signed up for this Microsoft 365 thing to whatever levels. And uh, those individuals can go off and use whatever devices they want. Shouldn't matter. Yeah, that's so an interesting way of yeah. thinking of it. The, 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 it the, is. We want to super support our super fans. Mm -hmm. So we make yeah. stuff for them. Yeah. But that's not the business. I mean, but well, it but is right. though, right? Yeah. Xbox and... Uh, it's not the business. And Surface oh, by the way, are that big is, business. That, They're billion dollar businesses, aren't they? Yeah. But that's yeah. Apple's yeah. business, right? I mean, that, I it think is. the problem here yeah. always kind of boils down to Apple envy, for lack of a better term. Yes. <laughs> and whether they were explicitly going yeah. after Apple like they did with Zoom back in the day or mm -hmm. uh, Surface Laptop for MacBook Air or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those instances obviously uh, exist, but... Do you think that's real or just what we interpret it as? I oh, no, it is. It is real. Absolutely yeah. real. Yeah. Yeah. I think yep. it is real. Yeah. Oh, it is. I've uh, talked to too many people not to know. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's absolutely real. No, if you look uh, at the it, way it was institutional for a while. Right. Look Windows at the way they Windows 8 happened surface. because of Apple. App Windows <laughs> 8 did. is it Apple's did. fault. <laughs> yes, you know? it is. I like um, that campaign. Let's let's go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you think Apple's so great? Well, look what they did to us. You know. No, but um, think think if okay, think if you're Amy Hood. I always go back to Amy Hood because I feel like she kind of runs Microsoft in a lot of ways. Get her She's fingers a CFO, on the purse strings. Right? That kind of person. Um, so she, if you're Amy Hood and you look at how great they are doing in business and how much they sell, you know, they always talk about, we've got 95% of the Fortune 500 using this or that, yeah. right? Then you go to consumer and you're like, and we have a tiny share of that market and uh, that's yeah, a big have, market and we want some of yeah. it, right? They or want, they want it the because better, but, that's where you grow your market. <laughs> oh, right? yeah. Okay. I, I mean, I was going to say at some point, maybe you just sort of acknowledge that we have certain strengths and all we're doing is wasting time and money half hearted our good. way through. <laughs> well, I'm just, you know, unfortunately you, you mentioned uh, a, a couple of the failures there up front and yeah. uh, the, and I joked about people being burned by that because they are burned by it, but of course they are because when a company yeah. the size of Microsoft puts its weight behind something, you think it's going to keep going. Right. And when they keep kind of kicking us in the rear again and again, uh, you sort of doubt their ability or certainly their uh, mm -hmm. ability to stick through it or whatever. But yeah. I, 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 at some point, you just have to sort of say, look, uh, you know, 
should you buy movies from Microsoft's movie and TV service? Right. No, <laughs> that would no. be a, that's a dangerous <laughs> thing to do. Just like buying eBooks from the service everyone's already forgotten about was a stupid yeah. idea or the wrong idea. Just like buying an Invoke speaker maybe wasn't the smartest idea. Like buying a Windows phone maybe mm -hmm. wasn't the smartest idea. Like buying wow. a media center wasn't the smartest idea. Like buying a Zoom <laughs> wasn't. I mean, Jeez, I could you're go talking on and on me out of it now. Well, I'm just saying, you know, we have <laughs> wow. many, many years of, and this is off the I top know. of my head, I'm sure there are others, um, of this kind of thing. And, and uh, I mean, no, even the duo, when the get? duo came out, right. I, and that's yeah. not, not, that's not necessarily a consumer first device, but when people would right. say to me, do you think I should buy a duo? I'd be like, uh, you know, I don't know what they're going to do. At like, least, are they going to keep going? At least, at least <laughs> right. the duo is sui generis. It's not, they're not copying yeah. nothing. That's that's, that's true. That's their that's own. own. By the way, that's true. It that's is. true. It that's is. true. <laughs> Which I like. No, I mean, even that's one even, of the resurface. Yeah, yeah. Surface was like that. I mean, they very mm -hmm. begrudgingly went into the laptop market, but they always wanted to have these unique devices. Yeah. And whatever you think of Surface, I, I personally, I sort of appreciate that approach. It's like, look, we're we're doing something different from everyone else. We'd like to see other people jump on board and make these things too. But you know, here's what we think is. Uh, a great expression of hardware for Windows, you know, eight at the time or Windows ten or whatever. Um, but yeah, I, I I don't know. I look, I I realize it's capitalism and we have to keep growing. But I, you know, yeah. I, I just have seen too many defeats here for me to even one mm -hmm. for me to I even know. wonder why they bother. I, I don't. I, don't I, I feel like Microsoft's <laughs> overarching strategy is absolutely solid because they want to be yeah. the backbone yeah. of everything. You mm -hmm. know. Um, sure. and, and that's smart. Anything else, these little tendrils they send out with Surface and Duo and uh, Xbox and stuff are just tendrils. The mainstream, yeah. and, and, and you know what, I'm, maybe they do it for ego or whatever, but I, I think live or die doesn't really matter, which is one of the reasons you well, don't want to invest in them because it could be like uh, another Zune. The, yeah, the fact that we're worried about live or die is, I think, the problem. So, um, Mary Jo, remember when um, uh, they announced Surface Duo and Surface Neo, right? At that October event, right. must have been 2019. Mm -hmm. It was. And I, after the event, I was talking to, I think it's okay to name this person. I was talking to Frank Shaw and I said, I, I don't, he says, you seem dubious about the phone thing. And I said, I, I just don't understand how you could go back and make a phone again. And he asked me rhetorically, he said, if we could have a small phone business that was profitable, would that be a problem? The, you know, the notion being that, look, we know we're not going to be up vying for number one or two with Samsung and Apple. We get mm -hmm. that. But if we could make a contribution here, you put out this device and the kind of surrounding ecosystem it has. And we can just keep it going, which is the trick, by the way. And yeah, maybe it's never in the top 10 or top five or whatever of devices, but it's it's profitable or whatever. Uh, he used the term, so we'll say profitable. Um uh, what's the difference, right? What if it's, so what if it's not, you know, changing the world, but if we have this thing, like Surface is arguably not changing the world as a brand, but the people who own those devices would, maybe not universally, but many of them, you know, they love it. They're high quality. Yeah. They perceive the value of the thing. I think they're wonderful, you know, for the most part. Mm -hmm. um, are they in the top one or two or five even? No, they're not. But so what? I mean, is that a problem? I, right. As long I think as they keep it going, like that's the yeah. trick. Well, if you're, again, back to Amy Hood, if you're Amy Hood, here's what you look at. You're like, okay, is Surface even making money or are they still in the red? We don't know, right? We actually don't know the answer to that question, do we? Yeah. Well. <laughs> we, like we know it's a $4 billion <laughs> business, but we don't know if they've, they're clearing any money. But yes. sometimes, you're yeah. sometimes you're willing to make the trade-off where you say, okay, we're actually losing money, but it's a loss leader, right? And we right. like well, that we it's have a the brand. brand. You mean like Bing yeah. and Xbox and... Yeah. No, I mean, no, no, we don't. Xbox, <laughs> no, those are but, terrible. No, but um, <laughs> no, no, Xbox but, isn't terrible. Um, no, but the, I, I feel no, like but, sometimes by the, the trade-off is worth yeah. it, right? <laughs> it's it absolutely is worth it, and, and Surface is yeah. a great example because it hits on so many levels. Because yeah, they're, a they're trying to inspire other PC makers to mm -hmm. up the game a little bit and maybe look for slightly more innovative form factors. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, different materials, different styles of things. They have a different, you know, their own way of doing things. Okay, yeah. good, bad, and different, whatever. Um, yeah. What if it loses money? What if it loses X, you know, it doesn't matter, big, little, whatever, right. but it, it's, uh, every time a Microsoft guy gets up on a stage anywhere, they pop, or a girl or whatever, they pop open a laptop and it's just got a Microsoft logo on it. Um, these are things I don't really see them on TV that much, but they are on TV. I mean, it's something you get in yeah. front of people, you see those things. Um, 
they look nice. I think they are nice, but mm-hmm. whatever. I'm sure some people disagree, but um, if you see people using them out in the world, it becomes like a, you know, it's just a little yeah. visual reminder. Like this is a it thing, is. Right. you know? Mm-hmm. So yeah, I mean, they're not, like I said, I don't think Surface yeah. is ever going to break into the upper echelon yeah. of PCs or whatever, yeah. but maybe it doesn't have to. Right. You know, right. as long as they keep it going. See, that's the trick. That, yeah. That's just, I know. The, the, yeah. you know, when, when you, when people said to you, should I buy a Surface 2? And you're like, eh, part of the rationale, part of your answer was based not just on the quality of the device, but based on your experience over the past based many on years. History. It was. Right? I mean, it. <laughs> That's what it, I even said to, to people. I'm like, so I, I was a big Windows phone user and advocate, and that yep. product doesn't exist anymore. So right. I don't want to tell you to go spend, you know, $1,500, $2,000 yep. on something that they may pull the plug on. Yeah. That's, that's no, exactly I, I, what I said. To I, I was the same person, and I, yeah. you know, I'm sure, <laughs> unfortunately, people, uh, <laughs> you know, bought them and, and, and liked them or didn't or whatever. I think yeah. a lot of people yeah, who yeah. had Windows phones love them, but. Yep. Um, yeah, I mean, could they have kept Windows Phone floating and d- kind of done the same thing? I don't know, maybe. I, I think yeah. the problem there is that there was a distraction ba- uh, with the application model and uh, and mm-hmm. you're just wasting too many engineering resources supporting yeah. a thing that wasn't out there in volume mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. when you could have been meeting customers where they are, which is what they are doing right. now. Sure. Right. So we, we should say what spurred the whole thinking around, is there a new consumer push and all? So what, what yeah. made me think about this and look more into this was um, a very small thing that happened this week. Microsoft added a creator's mode to LinkedIn. So right. in, this, in this terminology, creator's mode is like influencer, right? You're a, you're a social influencer and they're giving you ways to promote yourself as an influencer with hashtags and a follow button and different features. Um, to make you better able to kind of set yourself up as an influencer on LinkedIn. Now, the reason that's interesting from a consumer perspective is if you look at two companies, Microsoft allegedly looked into buying TikTok. Well, they did look into buying TikTok. And then Pinterest. The part of the reason they wanted these companies was because of communities and creators, the whole creator ecosystem, right? And how you can monetize that with commerce and ads and all, all the trappings around that. So they, Microsoft has decided they want to play into this con- communities and creators thing. And interestingly, they're bringing LinkedIn into this. And I, I actually right. saw a slide from an internal presentation that was uh, done recently at Microsoft where they listed LinkedIn among their consumer assets, which I thought was wow, really that's weird. Yeah. <laughs> right? I'm like, wait, wait a minute. Uh, like, this is an enterprise social network. What's it doing under the slide with Bing and like... So and obviously Xbox, right? <laughs> LinkedIn isn't a consumer product, but it is a product that could have a slice of prosumer okay. slash consumer audience, right? right. Um, learning. Brad, also LinkedIn Brad learning. mentioned uh, right. an update to Teams this morning that yep. uh, is unrelated to the thing you were talking mm-hmm. about with me yesterday, but yep. where it, there's a banner at the top and it says, hey, you know, you can connect with, con- mm-hmm. like, I don't know, it doesn't say consumers, but you can connect with your friends like yep. You would use Skype now, but now you can use Teams. You know, mm-hmm. Bing uh, search on the web when you sign in with a, an AAD account takes on a whole yeah. new thing where you can, you're not just yes. searching the web, but you're searching your corporate directory or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, Microsoft Edge has, you know, features you can sign in with work or home or both. You can have different mm-hmm. profiles and they have features that, you know, kind of make sense for consumers and features that kind of make sense for business users. And those could be yep. the same people. So maybe that's all, maybe that's what this is really. Mm-hmm. You know, in the same way that you could uh, have your uh, Outlook.com account and your work account in Outlook, right? The mm-hmm. the, the big desktop application. Yeah. A lot of these apps that are po- are uh, popular with businesses, maybe they have some use. Maybe it's just based on this work from home thing. I mean, maybe that's the... Yeah. We're yeah. blending our work and home lives in ways... Mm-hmm. We were talking, you know, we spent years talking about work-life separation. And then the pandemic <laughs> happened and it's like, eh. Yeah, it's so all the that. same. You know, <laughs> welcome to our no, nightmare. I, We've been working home for decades. You know, I was showing Paul. I got a new splash screen on Teams this week that just appeared out of nowhere. Right, like I didn't update Teams. I don't think or anything. But right. the the new 
startup splash screen that I see shows all these different email addresses of mine that I can sign into Teams with. And then when I get in Teams, it lets me add my personal account. So this is something they said was coming. They said it last fall, but it just showed up for me this week. And I'm mm. like, oh, that's interesting. So I never would think of signing into Teams with my Outlook address, you know, because that's my personal right. address. But now I'm like, oh, but I could. See, I, I you know, okay, so <laughs> you'll hate this example because I know you hate this feature, but um, I sign into Not Teams say with focused my- focused inbox. I am literally going to say, no, I'm going to say, <laughs> yeah, it's something like that. It's, no, it's, it's, it's linked, linked inbox, which is probably the, just one step down from that's what you're That's also describing. terrible. Yeah. yeah. So the, uh, but, yeah. but this would be useful to me because right now I use both Teams and Skype because <laughs> I've got um, work folks that are on Teams and I'm in that all day. And then I've got folks like you and, and Raphael and others who are on uh, Skype. And it would be nice if I could sign into Teams with the account I use with Skype, which is my yeah. old.com account or whatever. And do a, uh, I'm going to call it a LinkedIn box ish view yeah. of all of my contacts and it would know to use Skype or Teams, right? Like sure. that, that would actually be useful. That'd be pretty cool. I yeah. could have one client that does it, you know, that did everything. Yeah. That would be I nice. I don't think this would, does that though, that. right? Like no, if it does I not. signed in, <laughs> no, I'm like, I don't think that's what, have yeah. they even no, said they would not. like to do that? No, um, it's not. A no, I think idea. what you, I think you literally are selecting a user from a drop down. You are. And it changes you are. your contact list yeah. and everything else. Yeah. It does. It does. So you can have yeah. one, one personal account signed in with your work account. Um, on teams yeah. now. So yeah, you know, like you just said, it's the blurring of the lines between work and home because now when we're at work, meaning at home working, you're you're doing some sometimes you're doing things during the work day that are personal things and at night you're doing some things that are work things, right? So there is and a Sometimes you're just boring. watching funny dog videos on YouTube, you, you know, are, but whatever. You are. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you're drinking beer while writing a blog post. I don't Sometimes want them you are to know drinking that. coffee. I spent uh, two hours the other day watching videos of dogs <laughs> going to the vet. Their reactions are hilarious. Um, <laughs> I really wouldn't admit that if I were you. <laughs> I wouldn't either. Yeah. It's okay. Uh, yeah. our, our lives have changed because of the pandemic. I'm not afraid to admit it. <laughs> it's a short that. step from that to babies eating lemons. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> right. You, you know, you're uh, you're on yep. a slippery slope. <laughs> you know I what? Know. He needs a break from all that Call of Duty. So if it has to be <laughs> Right. I'm trying to wean myself off. That's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. No, you're right. You're right. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah, but I, 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 ca I can't help but think like this creators thing, you know, we we, all, we joke for us, we're a little wounded by the word creators in the Windows world because of mm -hmm. the Windows 10 creators update. Like oh, that's God, like that a was bad a, memory. Yeah, that right? was as almost as bad as Windows 8. It was like yeah, not a good kind of close, it's, it's just a, right? yeah, yeah, just a misdirect. It was such a bad idea. And now, they've but now they're kind of back to creators, and... right? But now they're back to targeting creators. But creators mean something different, right? If you look at creators on Facebook and creators on X, even Xbox has a creators program. Um, Xbox Live creators, yeah, that's true. Um, so yeah, yeah, but you know, when you think about uh, creation in the context of a PC user, I mean, really, what we're talking about is something that gets out of the way so we can go to that solution that we use mm -hmm. to create things with, whether it's. Yeah. some Adobe product or whatever it is, or if you're right, even if it's Microsoft Word, but you know, I don't want all this stuff around it. <laughs> you know, I'm, right. I'm trying to focus on the thing. And I think that's where they lost sight a little. They, they busied up Windows mm -hmm. 10 with um, f what for most people were super, uh, superfluous features, you know? Right. Well, that'll, so that's going to be interesting later this year because with all these things we're hearing about Sun Valley, right? And them trying to bring like the weather app thing in, into Windows 10. Um, like, are right. they going to bring right. a bunch of, su quote, superfluous features because yeah. they oh, think sure it's, they I can't wait. it's, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's the way yeah. to get to consumers. I mean, uh, hopefully there'll be a way to turn them off and to like, you know, keep You know what this out. is really, um, <laughs> we've been, we've been stuck, I don't stuck with is the wrong word, but we, we've been... On Windows 10 now for coming on, what, six years, right, this year? Right. And generally speaking, in the history of Windows, we would have had uh, two major ver new Windows versions in that time frame, right? So we, the, there would have been three, right, the one we started with mm -hmm. and then the two we upgraded to. Yeah. And in the past, when we went from different versions of Windows to different versions of Windows, there were often these major swings that were mm -hmm. kind of a um, reaction to what didn't work well the last time. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it was really kind of an up and down thing. And so like a, a, what the one big one I remember is like Windows Vista, uh, before Windows Vista, we had these Windows Live apps, but they were all kind of off on their own. And they were all, and we're going to bring those all in. We're going to have like a calendar app and a mail app. We're going to have a communications app. We're going to do all this stuff in-house. 
it's all going to be in Windows. And then it's like, oh, that didn't work very good. All right. So Windows 7, we're going to take all that stuff out. We're going to put it in this thing called Windows Live Essentials. And that way they can be upgraded, you know, on their own and more often and blah, 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 whatever. And that's what we've seen in Windows 10, right? We kind of, even though we still call it Windows 10, it's really that same up and down cadence or whatever, where yeah. things that uh, were, were in vogue uh, six years ago and were out of vogue three years ago, well, they're back like bell bottoms or uh, pet rocks <laughs> or something. I don't know. Bell bottoms. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's what it seems like. Yeah, it does. It does feel like that. It's felt very like cyclical and reactionary, right? Yeah. It, we always talk about, that, yeah, it's good to like pivot, but don't you don't have to go the full 180 just because you made right. a mistake over here, yep. right? <laughs> the other thing is like, you know, last year, like a year ago now, right? We, uh, we keep talking about this, but this pandemic hit and it's like, oh, you know, we're going to scramble to change everything. We got to adapt and blah, 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 and whatever. Mm -hmm. And like this coming year, we're going to see all this stuff piled into the Microsoft ecosystem because, my God, they're, of course, they're, they, they're all about productivity. They're embracing all this stuff. And it's like, guys, we, we're all back at work. Like, stop. <laughs> we don't need this stuff anymore, you know? Like, unfortunately, this is the nature of how long it takes to make this stuff happen. It may be a little yeah. passe by the time it does happen and we'll be Except ready for the next thing. I don't know. I feel like hybrid's here to stay, though. The no, of course it is. That yeah. no, like I know. Too, I know. Right? Yeah. So. I know. Even when we go back, like this is the week actually that Microsoft Soft opened Redmond campus. Really? Oh yeah. wow! Yeah. So there are Seems people. You premature. see people posting. Yeah. I know. You see people posting like, "Hey, I'm here, and it's weird. It's like a ghost town, this and that." But there. Oh, are not surprising. There was campus. also a COVID spike in the Redmond area. Uh, <laughs> really? <laughs> was there? Yeah. No, no there no, might be though. Down the road. You can imagine. Road. I mean, we have to wait two weeks. Yeah. For Just that, wait. But. You know what? We're almost there, folks. I know. I know. I know. Oh, I know. We're so close, but I know. not there yet. Yeah. It's like getting off the train before it le enters the station. You know, you just want to wait till it comes I to know. a full stop. You do. <laughs> right. But you've been delayed and you just want to get there so bad. Oh, you're so anxious. That's exactly yeah. right. You just can't wait. You're so I'm, I'm not saying that's me, but next Monday when I'm fully immune, quote unquote. <laughs> oh, party. In I'll the, be. Yeah. I'll be on the subway somewhere. Oh, for yeah. Sure. Me too. I oh, feel my the wife, same way. My, literally, when I got off this podcast, I'll be researching flights because my wife just got her first shot, and that means I got the timetable now. So you've had both, you know. Paul? No, I'll, my next one's next week. Yeah, but my, you kind of do the math. Like, she knows when her second yeah, yeah. one is, and then you yeah. go two weeks from that. You're like, <laughs> yeah, all right. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. April 28th. I got it in the calendar. I can't wait. Yeah, that's <laughs> actually my wife's uh, same date, I think. April 28th. Yeah. Man, it's going to be a party. Mm. <laughs> Except Lisa can't get it. She's trying so hard to get her shot, and she just can't. She's, oh, she's, she can't qualify. She's too damn healthy. That's the problem. Exactly. Well, yep. but California's going to be one of those states that moves to everybody really quickly, right? Yes. Um, uh, April 1st, it's 50 plus. April 15th, yeah. it's 16 plus. So that's what I right. told so, her. Right. So by the way, yeah, Pennsylvania, it's it's same thing. Yeah, it's going to happen. They just yeah, announced it today. There. Yeah, yeah, we're almost there. We're so close. So close. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's take a break. Come back with more. We have uh, Discord, developers, 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 Microsoft 365, and Xbox. <laughs> Do you develop a stutter, Leo? D -d 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 developers. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's now creators, creators, right. creators, creators. Creators, yeah. creators not haters. <laughs> Uh, our show today brought to you by Podium. Actually, this is kind of an interesting product for any small business or big business, I guess. But honestly, I think of it like for your dental office. You know who uses Podium in our town is the ice cream store. And I love that because I hear from them. That Podium is a way to talk to your customers in a way they will listen. Uh, and, and all I have to do is ask you as a customer, if you've ever thought, boy, I would like to be able to text my small business, not just call them, but text them. Like, are you open? Uh, can I put in an order so I can pick it up? Things like that. Unfortunately, most businesses these days, you know, don't have this capability, but that's why they need and you need if you're a small business podium. It's kind of, you know, this progression has happened in the 90s. You needed an email address, right? The 2000s, you needed a website. By 2010, you didn't have an Insta. What? what, what are, you, are you a business? You got to have a social media presence. Here we are in 2021. And I think the really critical piece now to the puzzle of course, I hope you have an email and a website and a social media presence. But what about Podium? You need to be texting. Podium is a messaging platform that will power your business. You can reach your customers wherever they are. Business messaging with Podium helps you gain reviews. I'll give you an example. The other day I left the dentist. Text message pops up. 
how was our service? Give us a review. Leave us a review. And, uh, and, it, chan and it could channel to whatever review site you, you want to support. You can collect payments, write in text messages, communicate with customers, capture leads, all from a single inbox. I tell you, when, when I get the text message from our ice cream shop, we miss you. Here's 20% off. It's everything I can do <laughs> not to hop in the car and head on over. Podium helps you adapt uh, to changing customer expectations. And I tell you what, I, as, a, as, a, as a user, when I can text a business, when they text me, it's, a clo it's a, something about it. It's a natural relationship. And in fact, 98%, this is a re research, recent research, 98% of all texts are opened. Email, 20%. So it's, and I know that too, because email for me, I, you know, half the time I miss it. I never mix, miss a text message. In fact, I even tell people, if you want to reach me, don't call me, don't email me, text me. Podium Reviews lets you send a text to customers saying, hey, I hope you enjoyed your meal. I hope you enjoyed your visit. Leave us an online review. This also will help with search rankings, of course. Podium Web Chat, you can put that right on your website. It lets visitors text with your team right from your homepage, and your team will like it because they don't have to use some special tool to respond. They can respond right back in text. You can meet with customers on Podium Video Chat. Yeah, of course they do that too. And you get paid fast over text with Podium Payments. Podium Inbox brings it all together, keeps leads warm, lets you respond to feedback all in one place. Onboarding is quick. You'll be using Podium if you call them now or visit them, the website now, and I'll have a special address for you in a second. You'll be set up within a day, 24 hours. And Podium has, they're great. I've talked to them. They have a full team in place to answer your questions, to walk you through everything. Some examples. A uh, little, little store called the Bridal Collection. Lynn's the owner. We don't have to take credit cards into the store. We can do it completely remotely. Podium has been a godsend for us in this journey. South Tampa Family and Cosmetic Dentistry. I really think dentists are really a perfect example who should use this. They ask for a review after you leave your appointment. And they and because it comes in text, comes right away. People just respond. They go, yeah, yeah. So 1,200 reviews they've collected using Podium, averaging 4.9 stars. And Dr. Wyatt says the number of walk-ins as a result of these reviews has skyrocketed. Before, we were seeing maybe 50 to 100 new patients a month. Now we're seeing closer to 200. Double them. I can go on and on. You could find uh, more reviews if you want at podium.com slash WW. But I would suggest you get started free today. And, and that will tell you immediately what a useful tool this is. Easy for you to use. More importantly, easier for customers to use. Find out how Podium can help your business reach more customers. Podium.com slash WW. And now when I think about it, once I met these Podium guys and talked to them, and I, I realized which of the businesses in my town use Podium, and those are the ones I interact with the most. It really works. Podium.com slash WW. Thank you, Podium, for supporting Paul and Mary Jo and Windows Weekly. Thank you for supporting us by using that special address so they know you heard it here. Uh, -ba -ba -bum. Is, is the Discord deal still around or is that over? Do you know? Uh, it sounds like the rumors about it happening are ramping up. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Yep. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Wall Street Journal late last week said, I think we had heard that there were a number of possible suitors, and now they've heard Microsoft is exclusively negotiating with Discord. I'm actually kind of excited by that. You are? Yeah. Well, I yeah. love Discord. <laughs> Um, yeah. And, of course, I know everybody who uses Discord, just like everybody who used GitHub mm -hmm. and everybody who used Skype, uh, probably there's some trepidation. Big company mm -hmm. comes along, buys you. Discord is, yep. it's a big company now, but it feels mm -hmm. uh, not like a big company. It feels like kind of an inside I mean, thing. There are questions about how Microsoft would use it, right? Right. And I, this, is, uh, this is an understandable concern because they do have other products that... Mm -hmm. You know, kind of compete with it or in the same space at yeah. least. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's, in fact, an open source uh, tool that, uh, I, you know, just like when people left GitHub for GitLab or other Git providers, people will, if Microsoft buys Discord, go to Matrix, which is yeah. an open source solution. But it's yeah. not as convenient. It's not as easy. Mm -hmm. There's, Discord mm -hmm. is one of those rare companies where they nailed it. They just nailed it. Mm -hmm. Well. Wow. Don't you think? Or did you use it? I've never used it. Oh. I, um, yeah, I don't know. Well, 
get ready. We're going to be using it more, I think. I know. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> yeah. I guess I will be. We're all yeah. going to be using it a lot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it depends if the deal goes through. I mean, the journal said they heard it could happen as soon as April. So we're starting April next week. And uh, $10 billion sounds like the price, $10 billion or more, uh, which for Microsoft is not their biggest right. acquisition ever, right? At 26 billion. But it's their second billion. biggest, isn't it? Or is it's their second biggest. But um, I feel like, you know, they were willing to buy TikTok for a lot more and they were looking at right. Pinterest. I'm like, they're ready to spend some money. 10 billion today is not as much as it was. Petty cash. It's petty cash. It's, <laughs> it's a not, mere drop in the bucket. It's a drop bucket. in the bucket. <laughs> <laughs> Any 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 program manager at Microsoft could sign off on that amount now. It's <laughs> here's the fear, quite legitimate, that they will fold it into Teams or something like that. Of right, course, right. that would be a nightmare, and I, and, and yep. they would lose their cu customer base. Well, they would lose the point of the thing they yeah. bought, right? right. So right. I don't that's think the, they're going to do that. The question. Do you? No, yeah. I think no. if they're smart, they plan to tie it into Xbox. Because it is well. I, by the way, sure. I think it will be a Discord app that runs in Teams for sure. But that's doesn't yeah. you know that's not what people are going to use. Probably already uh, is. It's probably already a yeah, plugin. Other probably already is. <laughs> right. Okay. Discord plugins. Um, <laughs> but they don't replace. They should yeah. not replace Discord. Yeah. I mean, and then the other question yeah. is just like Xbox in general, right? Although I think in in many ways the non gaming aspects of Discord are probably more interesting. Mm. Well, as it turns out, I mean, it really was originally gamer chat. Yeah, um, like you know, and I'm. That's why I'm surprised. But it's exploded it. but it's, uh, over the it, everybody uh, pandemic. It it's become things, IRC. Yeah. It's become uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, just people kind of just a mix of IRC and, and messaging, you know, and WhatsApp yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, it would but if you go back to go back to creators and communities, right? Their new <laughs> rallying cry. This is where oh, Discord fits, fits in. Right? Right. Fits perfect. <laughs> I would yeah. love to see them not see it as a way to enhance Teams, but see it as a way to compete with WhatsApp. That's what I think yes. they would say. Like offer a really robust encrypted right. end-to-end encrypted messaging platform. It uh, you know D Discord's big strength is group messaging of course. It supports audio and video though too. Yeah. I mean it's it's it yeah. could be a, a very strong competitor to WhatsApp and this is a good time to do it I think. So where does that leave Skype? <laughs> I don't know. We well, no, I mean, really, leave. it's a, you know. also Group Me. Doesn't Microsoft own Group Me, which is another thing that's kind of like they also WhatsApp bought too. Yammer. Remember? <laughs> oh yeah, and Yammer. Yep. <laughs> I mean, Microsoft. This would not be their first messaging platform. No, no. it would not. But Yammer, I feel like they've they've kind of put that into a new bucket in a way. Like that's that's definitely a productivity thing. That's part of Microsoft 365. That's where Yammer sits. Yeah. So they kept, they've kept the brand, which I find confusing. Yeah. I feel like Yammer yeah. should have just been rolled into SharePoint, and that should have been the end of that. <laughs> you know. Um, yeah. But whatever. Anyway, okay. But I know. Yeah, but. Uh, Man, it's confusing. I feel like Microsoft, no, Microsoft's the master of having multiple things that overlap and trying to manage them independently. And what I'm thinking of when I say that is the Dynamics product line because they bought a whole bunch of ERP companies and they still have like four different ERP lines. <laughs> and they're, they're targeted at different markets, right? So they have like Navision, Exact. So well, by the way, that yeah. can work. I, I don't know how this works yeah. for Facebook, but Facebook has Facebook Messenger and WhatsApp, right? Yeah. Um, and I know Facebook is, I don't know what they're doing exactly, but I know they're doing some form of integration between their various products, um, whatever, but they're still keeping them separate. Yeah. Um, so you can do that, I guess. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and then today, right, right before the show started, there's word that, um, discord is getting it, like everybody, a competitor at a clubhouse. So yeah, that would give Microsoft yeah. also an interesting. Well, they kind of have into that area. they kind of have that capability already. So it'd be interesting to see. Yeah. What this? What's yeah. different? So I think there really is going to be a challenge from Amazon because a lot of Twitch mm -hmm. streamers use Discord. Mm -hmm. um, Wait, what do you call it? Clubhouse? I thought it was um, C Lubhouse. <laughs> 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 no? Just like P interest, it is. That yeah, is exactly I, I, how you put I, it. I have trouble with words. <laughs> <laughs> we don't let him out of the house a lot. You know? I thought it was Clubby yeah. House. I didn't know. <laughs> Clubby so, House. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't, I mean, Discord does Clubhouse. You can have maybe, yeah. I don't it know. It sounds what like it would audio, be separate audio room type yeah, thing. You can have right? audio rooms. You can have audio rooms you can? right now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I don't, I don't exactly yeah. sure what it is. There was also. 
Well, there was a rumor earlier this week that LinkedIn was going to add something to compete with Clubhouse. Oh, like everybody is. Yeah. yeah, everybody is. Mark Cuban just yeah. did. Everybody's doing Clubhouse. Twitter. Everybody does. went to like online thesaurus and was like, "What's another word for Clubhouse? Because we're going to add something <laughs> uh, that so with dumb. that named as a feature yeah, to our exactly. existing product." <laughs> yeah, because yeah. Clubhouse isn't that all that anyway. No, right. Right. Uh, as soon as it becomes open to the public, yeah. right. it's only right. popular right now because you have to get an invite. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I just, uh, I was like Gmail. <laughs> like Gmail, same thing. They did the same thing. <laughs> That's what I thought. It's of a brilliant marketing strategy. Right. You right. Know? Yeah. I would, I would never join a club that would have me as a member. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? Um, uh, I want to say Leo DeRocher or somebody like that. No, no. It, was, it was someone. It was, I thought it was like a famous if, comedian from like the 30s or 40s. Like oh, maybe, uh, maybe W.C. Fields, Fields or someone Groucho like that. Groucho Marx said it. You're right. Groucho Marx. Groucho okay. Marx. Okay. Yeah. Chat room. Thank yeah. you. Evil John knows. Reverb Mike knows. Yeah. <laughs> Breaking news: Microsoft has won a contract to build more than 120,000 custom wow. hollow lenses for the U.S. Army. Wow. They're going to double their market share. <laughs> Exactly. Could be worth twenty one point eight eight billion over ten years. This is bigger than Jedi. It is. I'm mm. like, wow. Hmm. Wow. Well, we're gonna be looking at Alex uh, Alex Kipman in an aquarium for the next five years, I'll tell you that. <laughs> what do you think? The army saw the Cirque mm -hmm. du Soleil Burning Man demo and said oh, They're like, Oh, so I'm gonna stick it to the so Navy. Cool, we need that. <laughs> Party! We don't have they to go in the water to see the whales. Didn't they already have a deal for HoloLens in the Army? They did. They did I feel have like a deal. they did, yeah. Yeah. So well, it's maybe it's gone well, extension. so they're expanding it. Maybe yeah. that's yeah. what this they're is. Buying more yeah. of them. That's a lot of them. 188,000. 120,000. That's a lot. It's a lot of those big goggles on your head. Yep. Uh, well, if you think about it, the future of war is uh, remote control, right? Yeah. Sure. Yep. Who foresaw that? Uh, let's talk about Project Reunion. Is that a real? Is that a real one, or is that like, <laughs> is that like one of those uh, omnibus uh, things that Microsoft? Did? What was the one they did? The Mesh. Is this like Mesh, where it's like no, no, no. Project Reunion? No, it isn't. It, no. it isn't. It's not a, a, a dish you would have for breakfast, mother and child reunion. <laughs> a dish that's better served cold. Yes, like revenge. Yes. <laughs> Tell me more. Project Reunion hits a milestone. Yeah. yeah. So Reunion is a real thing. And um, this is Microsoft's attempt to try to clean up its developer story around Windows. You now they had UWP and they had Win32 and they thought they could, could convince the Win32 people to do some work on their apps and make them UWP apps. And then that fizzled just like Windows 8, up in smoke, poof, yep, gone. <laughs> so then they, Kevin Gallo and team said, you know, yeah. we got to fix this, right? We got to bring these two groups together, UWP and Win32, and make them one big happy family targeting one billion Windows PCs that are out there. So that's Project Reunion in a nutshell. Okay, but uh, like, uh, boy, <laughs> I don't... Um, that was my Cliff Notes version. No, you're right. I'm, I'm, I'm not... Uh, I'm not taking exception to anything you said. It was all correct. I, 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 but it, <laughs> in many ways, doesn't encapsulate what's happening here because it's really confusing. Um, it is. <laughs> you know, Win32. If you're like strict Win32, you're a C++ developer writing. Yeah. Not no one is doing this, but these apps are out in the world, whatever. And then UWP are on opposite ends of a spectrum, and um, they both have their strengths and weaknesses for sure. There's no real bridging this gap. I mean, um, right. what, I know. I, that said, I, I like the idea behind this, which is to yeah. take new technologies that were previously tied to a specific Windows 10 version, pulling them out of that platform and making them available to developers, no matter which programming paradigm they prefer, which A, smart, they should have done that back five years ago, six years ago, whatever. Okay, fine. Um, more important though, stripping it from its uh, Windows 10 version problem, mm -hmm. right? That it, right. Uh, it will work on any supported version of Windows 10, not just whatever that specific version would have been. So I, like to me, that's really smart. Um, but the longer this drags on and uh, the longer it takes and the less full-featured it is as, as these milestones hit, it, 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 it really has kind of a futile ring to it to me. I, I have not looked mm -hmm. at this now in several months, but the last time I 
played around with this. A, a project reunion desktop app is just a, a UWP app, really. I mean, as far as the developer is concerned, mm -hmm. as far as what you can do with it. And unfortunately, at that time, this is, a, again, months ago, but uh, it, it was actually even more limited than a UWP app just because it was a new thing and they weren't, you know, it's, it hasn't been completely um, completed yet. So I don't know. I, 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 this is the type of thing I want to be really excited about, yeah, but I, I, I don't say, really you see this. Believe, right? yeah. <laughs> well, I, like I said, I think it's smart. It's what they should have done years yeah. ago. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it's going to move the needle. I don't think there's a lot of new windows development happening. Uh, that's only no. Windows, uh, and that the audience will attract with this. I, 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 or they're hoping to attract is people who are supporting existing big applications that are too right. complicated mm -hmm. to rewrite as a new app in whatever framework, or you know, whether it's UWP or the web or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And eh, I don't know. Yeah, I was. Um, I always think back. We talked to Corel. A year ago in person, right? It might have been two years ago. I don't remember when this conversation took place. But when we were talking to Gerard at that time, we asked him about how they decide to bring new features into their products. Mm -hmm. And it was based on the uh, installed base of particular Windows 10 versions at the time. So they, yeah. they're they a real life example of why this kind of thing is important. Uh, because if Microsoft introduces new platform features now, a, a third-party developer like Corel or anybody else could adopt them immediately because they don't have to worry about the versioning issues. Mm -hmm. It will be, this thing will work on every supported version of Windows 10. Mm -hmm. So that's good. Yeah. But I don't know. So what? <laughs> you I know. Know. So you're, you're and, wondering, will it spur any brand new I development? I don't think of it Windows will. 10? I just don't see that happening. Well, I don't, I don't even think people who are developers think about that anymore. Yeah. Do they? No, that's fair. <laughs> Right. Like, I feel like they think about maybe doing a web app, right, or developing a mobile app. Um, and mm -hmm. I, I agree with you that it's for people who have Win32 apps who Microsoft was hoping would go to UWP. And instead, now they're saying, what, OK, what if we just let you take some of the elements of right. UWP right. and modernize your app? Right. Yeah. It's, and, like, a, it's like a half step. Right. <laughs> yep. No, I, like I said, it's a good idea. Like, I, yeah. I don't. Yeah. I, 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 it's not a bad idea. It, it's late. It's it. This should have happened. It is late. It is late. I think they've just I lost it, everyone's attention. You know. Well, I think they had to wait for the people who are true UWP believers um, mm -hmm. to leave the premises. Jeez. Okay. Uh, <laughs> right. Don't let the door <laughs> so hit you on the way. So we can say, yeah. So yeah. we can say, okay. So that didn't work. Like making everybody forcing everyone to go to UWP. So let's fix it. And then you know. Turning the ship around. It's like the Suez Canal thing, right? Like, eh, it's so tough <laughs> right. to turn that ship, right? <laughs> yep. I'm Run into do a, a wall. 127 point turn yeah. to get out of here. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I feel hmm. like I agree with you. It's it's late, but better late than never, I feel like. <laughs> okay, yeah. No, I and yes, it, uh, the important thing is this is a good idea. Um, it is. And right now they're at 0.5. They say they're going to be a 0.8, which will have more functionality and a support. I think by that point, starting to support more yeah. of the flavors of Windows 10. Um, and then by the end of this year, they're saying Q4 reunion 1.0 will be out. I have a hard time imagining that they're going to hit that. But OK, that's fine. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think the, the other big part of this announcement for 0 0.5 is that this is the first version of Project Reunion to include the shipping version of WinUI 3.0. Yep. And WinUI 3, for now at least, is by far the biggest piece of the puzzle that is Project Reunion, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, because it's a basically a graphical component. So it's um, this is a way to bring modern UI down to mm -hmm. legacy apps. Yep. And God help anyone. But see, this is the <laughs> thing. That you, well, no, because... <laughs> I don't know. I guess it, uh, WPF is supported. Win it says WinForms. Okay. I, I mean, all of the major ways that developers have created desktop apps in the Microsoft ecosystem over the past, we're going to, I mean, God, it's almost 20 years, believe it or not, mm. are technically supported, if you don't mind packaging with MI, MSIX right now, um, which is a, a packaging format that would allow you to get into the store, if I'm not mistaken, but it's not, um, I don't think it's store only. I think they they're kind of, opening that up yeah. right they are um yeah. okay. right. that's the other I'd thing you don't have to put your apps on the store you can yeah you don't right 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 yeah um 
Hmm. I don't know. I know. Come I on, know. be an optimist. Too old to be an optimist, Mary Jo. But I, um, he's given up on all that. <laughs> it's optimism is that's optimism is it's not kids. a winning game. It's for you kids. <laughs> yeah. Let's take a little break. Paul can think about what he's done. <laughs> <laughs> right. Mm. Reflect. 365 at Xbox coming up plus the back of the book. Your picks, your tips, your beer. I need to check. Let me make sure. Don't want to promote beer if we don't have beer. No, it's a lovely cocktail. This looks dangerous. <laughs> you know, it's Easter weekend. We got to do it's something for Easter. for Easter. It's an Easter right? cocktail. All right. Uh, yeah. yeah. All right. Our show today brought to you by ESET. Oh, for so long I have uh, I've talked about ESET. Man, that was the that was kind of the advertiser maybe ten years ago. Back then, I loved ESET because it was lightweight. It didn't get in the way. Um, but I kind of lost track of them over the years. Turns out, all this time we've been using it, and I didn't even know it. That's how small and lightweight it, ESET is. And it's also how good it is because we've not had any, boy, knock on wood when I say this, not had any problems with malware or ransomware coming in over the transom. ESET protects businesses worldwide, businesses like ours, They've been doing it for over 30 years on the forefront of cybersecurity, helping businesses and people in more than 200 countries stay safer. We've been relying on ESET for a long time. See, Russell uses the enterprise version of ESET for several reasons. One, because you, you, can, you can keep an eye on things from the cloud. Russell is our IT guy, but he's a MSP, a managed service provider. So he has other clients and he's traveling a lot. But anytime there's an issue... He can get, he'll get pinged on his phone or via email, and he can check in on the cloud and see what's going on right here. The expert at ESET know that even with the latest cybersecurity technology, without proper training, your staff could be the biggest threat to your organization's cybersecurity. So we have some, some new information to help you become a cybersecurity MVP. This is just kind of... I think this is kind of a public service from uh, ESET. Here is what we tell our employees what ESET says you should know to become a cybersecurity MVP. First of all, with password security questions, eh, fake answers offer real security. It, bad idea. We, everybody knows don't use your mother's maiden name, but when, when a pet's name or or a first car, or your high school mascot is the question, use a fake answer. In fact, I use uh, my password manager to generate a effectively a password is the answer to the question. I keep track of it in the password manager. That way, it can't be guessed. Real answers to personal security questions are easily guessed and often can be found by hackers just through social media or searching around. Phishing scams only work if you're not paying attention. Before you click on an email from a sender you don't know, make sure the URL is correct. You could check this by hovering over the link in the email to see if it matches the source of the email. If the sender and the URL don't match up, don't click on it. You know that. We always tell everybody two-factor authentication is the number one way to keep sensitive accounts safe. Protects you from hackers and passwords. In fact, I, you know, I, uh, here's a perfect example. I just got a text message from my bank saying, uh, you know, here's the uh, here's this uh, authentication code. And I said, what? And I immediately called Lisa. I said, did you just ask for that? And she said, yes. I said, oh, phew. But that's a great heads up, right? And I know with two-factor, I'm safe. Public Wi-Fi, <laughs> it's just that public. Never visit websites that have sensitive or personal information when you're using a public network. If you need to visit those sites, connect to your phone's secure data service instead. ESET is that's a little public service announcement from ESET. They just earned top ratings in AV Comparatives Endpoint Prevention and Response Comparative Report. Test of nine vendors, the top nine. ESET not only got the highest combined prevention and response score in the test, but also demonstrated outstanding overall detection and reporting capabilities. We love ESET. We recommend ESET for your business. For more expert advice and cybersecurity training tips, check out ESET online at business.eset.com slash train. It's free. Business.eset.com slash train. Trust ESET to future-proof your business. 
Uh, let's get back to Paul, Mary Jo, and the show. And By the way, real quick, yes. um, Google just announced that employees are going to start coming back to their offices in April. Wow. But not fully until September. Yeah, that's a little more sensible. That's a little, I'm, you know, it's funny. I'm a little disappointed. Maybe that's just me. I've been coming <laughs> to the office. I don't want to go back to <laughs> Oh, I see. <laughs> yes. I'm kind of used to the whole pandemic thing. Yeah. Actually, here's the surprising bit to me, and maybe this is just me being in my own little cloud or whatever, but Microsoft and Google both have basically said, uh, you know, we, th we recommend that you get vaccinations uh, before you come back to the office, but you don't have to. Yep. Like, uh, what? Why, don't they have to? <laughs> maybe, <laughs> I mean, maybe they don't want, maybe they can't they say they have to. Nobody's forcing yeah. anyone, though. Like, hospital workers don't even have to get vaccinations. So that, to me, that sounds crazy. I mean, I think people who teachers are... Teachers don't. Like, teachers don't uh, have is a to. great example of someone <laughs> yeah. who should have to. Um, yeah. I, you know, but again, it's I... It's still optional. I'm, I'm, yeah. Maybe I'm in a bubble or something. I don't know. I mean, over here on the vaccinated side of the fence, I could just say that... No, I mean, I just feel like... Um, yeah, everyone, I know what you're saying. In certain, I know. For certain things, you should have to. I think. No. Okay. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I, I, I feel safer being along. around people who are vaccinated yeah. for sure. <laughs> yeah. And and then you're you're all anxious to go back. I just I, maybe it's for, it's very selfish of me. I know everybody wants no, to go back. No, you know what? I like the hybrid idea. I I think it's pretty cool um, to be able to go back yeah. when you want and need to have in person meetings if yep, you feel I safe agree. about it. And I think it's good that you don't have to go every day. Microsoft, okay. <laughs> 365. Yes, thank you for saying it in the British way. Yes, 365. Oh, no, they say 36, what do they 365? say? 365. 365. 365. 365. What do we say, 365? 365. Now I'm confused. <laughs> What's it's this? actually, objectively, a terrible name for anything. It is like, the fact that we're questioning this. It's, it's four almost like Azure. Alone. Azure is like this too. Like, did you have to pick a, is it a sure? What are we talking it's about? It's seven. Now? It's Microsoft 365. It's seven syllables. No yeah, name for any product should be seven syllables. <laughs> I'm just saying. Microsoft has the worst product names ever in the history of all products, yeah. as we all know. So. And is it like, well, oh, you should be working every day of the year? No Christmas for I, it's you? It's not sending a good message. I, Yeah, I couldn't agree with that Well, more. then when it goes down, you see people typing, oh, <laughs> yeah. Microsoft 364. More like 365, <laughs> am I right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah so. No, they didn't call it 24-7, folks. It's not 365 no, it in a day in a row. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> it's over a two-year period. It is. <laughs> right. Exactly. Right. Uh, guaranteeing five eighths of up uptime. Anyway, um, so <laughs> this past month, uh, Windows 10 version 20 H2, which is the latest version still somehow, uh, now accounts for about 30% of all Windows 10 PCs out in the world. That's a 10 percentage point jump over February when it had about 20%, right? So that's good. Um, and then what are we thinking? I guess probably... A, probably even May, right? Before 21H1 happens. We haven't heard any update. It's, I mean, it's barely in the release preview channel at this point. So maybe Right, I'm right. Yeah, that, and that just happened last me. week. That's right. Yeah, so, so, so yeah, it could be a while. Yeah. So it still has room to grow, I guess. And uh, and that's all good. So <laughs> Room to grow. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, the, the, it, the previous version, 2004, is the biggest, yeah. you know, the biggest version by volume. Uh, and it accounts for about 42%. So between mm -hmm. that and the most recent version, we're looking at what, that's like 70, when I say 30%, yeah, so 72% mm -hmm. of all Windows 10 PCs out in the world are running new versions, basically, right? Yeah. Versions from the past year. That's right. great. That's actually really yep. good. I don't know if that's a record or something, but I mean, it's good. That's mm. that's where they, that's what they, that was always the goal of this thing, right? Right. Mm. Uh, to get us to this point. So that's finally happening. Good for them. <laughs> good for you. Good well done. So uh, years ago, Microsoft used to sell a, it was a standalone fingerprint reader, remember? I think it attached mm -hmm. via USB. Yep. Oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah. And then yeah. They've, they've had a couple of, They've had at least one standalone keyboard set, keyboard mouse set that had a fingerprint reader in it, if I'm not mistaken. 
And then in more recent years, they, they've they had a very small number of Surface branded stuff. I think it was a one Surface keyboard cover, I think, that had a fingerprint reader built into it. It could have been for the original. Mm -hmm. I don't know, it was a long time ago. Uh, yeah. But those older products were all before Windows uh, Hello, not the Surface one, but the other two. Um, so they, they never came forward. Like Microsoft stopped supporting those years ago. But I never quite understood once Windows Hello happened why we haven't seen this really big, healthy market of Windows Hello compatible fingerprint readers and uh, webcams. I mean, there are a few, at least especially the webcam side. Uh, but this past week, Kensington announced a new standalone desktop fingerprint key, which is a Windows Hello compatible fingerprint uh, reader, which you can add to any Windows 10 p uh, base PC. Smart. Uh, and I assume I see a cable on this thing, so it must attach over USB. Um, 75 bucks. I'm told, actually, since I wrote this, I believe there's a version that's only about 40 or $50 as well. I think the $75 version has a 18-foot USB cable or something. It has some kind of a long cable, but um, I guess there's a version with a, a shorter uh, key um, cable as well. So, nice. You know, it's funny. You were just talking about this last week on the show about where the Windows Hello yeah. fingerprint reader is. And then this right. thing shows up. I'm like, okay. Yeah, so I get a lot of announcements from companies uh, that I, you know, half pay attention to. This one kind of came in and I was like, nice. And then they were like, you know, if you want to get one to review, you have to sign one. And normally I'm like, yeah, whatever. And this time I'm like, yeah, no, I do want to see this. <laughs> I want to see, I've been waiting, waiting years for this. You know, I would love to have something like this uh, for this system. I prefer, very much prefer fingerprint to um, webcam. That's, that's just me. Mm -hmm. yep. So, yeah, I'm, I'm eager to, to test it. And what else we got? Oh, yes, the funeral of the week. Um, <laughs> Project reunion. This was, but yeah. come on, this wasn't this wasn't unexpected. I know. This next, I know. Item. This was uh, last July. Microsoft announced two things, right. uh, and they have now brought them both to fruition. <laughs> uh, the first was that they were getting rid of Cortana in support in the Invoke speaker, mm -hmm. which happened very early this month, if I remember correctly. And the other was that they were going to end support for the standalone Cortana app on Android and iOS. And this is part of, remember at the time they were reassessing what Cortana was and rethinking what it was and um, making it part of Microsoft 365. Now, to be clear, uh, Cortana still exists on mobile. If you have Outlook Mobile, for example, there are Cortana features in there, including a read my email yep. uh, mm -hmm. feature. Um, Microsoft To-Do has uh, Cortana integration. And if you're using Windows 10, of course, you have Cortana in Windows. So it's not going away, Cortana, that is. Um, but obviously, the service has changed a lot over the past year and a half. And um, the standalone client is going away. So in fact, that I think literally today, if I'm not mistaken, is the yeah. day. Yeah. After after today, the mobile app will no longer be supported. Aww. Can I ask a, what I think is going to be a dumb question about the Harman Kardon? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So I have a Harman Kardon, and right. um, now that it's just a Bluetooth speaker, is there any way that I can set it to play music when I take my phone away with me and let it keep playing when my phone isn't there? No. Or does my phone? No, right? Not, not an I easy like way. I was like racking anyway. my brain. I'm like, how do you? How would I do this? I don't think you can, right? right? So it's. Um, it's Bluetooth based, so you would yeah, have to have something in the house w that runs Bluetooth that would trigger okay. that. So I suppose you could leave your computer on and have it play a Spotify yeah. playlist or something. Okay. I mean, Sirachi likes to have his pet playlist on when I yeah. Go. Do you have that cat sound CD? <laughs> no, he has his own pet playlist. You know, Spotify has pet he, playlists. He literally does. Generate. Wow. He does. He sits there with um, a little pair of headphones at night, kind of. <laughs> what, what is what kind of music does uh, Sirachi like? So it, it asks you all these questions about your pet. Does he like to do this? Is he happy when he hears this kind of music? And you answer them all, and then it generates I, I, a list. I will send this to you. I, I bought... That's cool, actually. <laughs> ...years yeah. ago, like a cat yeah. music CD. Like, they actually kind of scientifically <laughs> created this thing so it would appeal to cats. And I got to say, the first yeah. time I ever played it, my cats rolled around on the floor in front of the speaker. They loved it, right? <laughs> they were like... Yeah, they were quite taken with it. So it's... <laughs> You could also put on uh, Pet Sounds by the Beach Boys. I think is probably a good one. Uh, <laughs> right. 
No, I just had that. I, I was like, Paul's going to know the answer to this if anybody does. So I, mean, I don't know I um, if, <laughs> yeah, if there's a, is there a line in Jack on this thing? I probably not. If there is, you could connect something that way. Mm. But I would say oh, yeah, sure. if you have a Bluetooth is. device in your apartment, you could leave that. Yeah, oh, yeah that's that way, what I got to do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because now it's just interrupt. a Bluetooth speaker. So It is. Yeah. Finally, immersive reader. Finally. Finally. I've been <laughs> waiting for this all show long. Yeah. Actually, this feature is kind of awesome. So uh, immersive reader is basically a feature of Microsoft Edge today. And on most w like web articles, um, there's a you'll see a little, it looks like a book with a speaker on it, but you can also hit F9. And you can go into immersive reader mode, and then you can figure you can configure what that looks like. It can you can have it read things aloud. You can it can highlight each word as it goes. It does all this kind of stuff. And so Microsoft has been looking for ways to roll this into other products. Um, so as well, not as of now. This is all happening over the. I'm going to call it the next month or so. Mm -hmm. um, they're adding it to um, what are they adding it to? PowerPoint on the web, OneDrive also on the web, SharePoint, and uh, MakeCode. And so it's a little different in each case, but in PowerPoint for the web, you can highlight text in a slide, right click and go into immersive reader to just kind of read it more of a, it's like a full screen view, basically. It's not really completely full screen, but a bigger view, uh, which is better for reading. Or you can uh, also view your notes. So, you've, you know, you have the slide and then you have the slide notes at the bottom. You can read the slide notes in immersive reader mode. So that makes sense. Um, on In OneDrive's case, this is OneDrive for the web. You can optionally open Word documents and text documents in this mode, right, directly from the web. That's actually really cool. I, I um, OneDrive's support for text documents is actually kind of lousy, which is a weird thing to say. But if you've ever opened a web, um, uh, a text document on the web, it's it's just terrible. It's it's awful. So this is actually that's the the one I'll probably use the most. And the SharePoint one is weird. I'm not uh, not a big SharePoint guy. This has never really come up, I guess. Um, <laughs> uh, but SharePoint supports all kinds of different features. One of them is this notion of a SharePoint page, and that's literally a web page. So there, it will become a, a toolbar option in SharePoint to view any SharePoint page as an immersive reader document. So it will come up just text. Uh, really nice. And then MakeCode is a, uh, I, this is fairly new, right? MakeCode is in some, isn't this something they announced in the past year? Yeah, you know, I didn't even know what MakeCode was when I saw this announcement. I'm like, what's It's a way to learn code? coding, uh, and they have tutorials, and um, okay. you can now optionally read, or soon optionally read the tutorials in Immersive Reader. It just makes them easier mm -hmm. to read again, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, there you go. It's the uh, LinkedInification of <laughs> Immersive Reader. I don't know. They're putting it out there, I guess. It's good. Yeah. Um, Xbox Time. Oh, yes. Oh, oh yes, yes baby. Xbox. It's time for the Xbox. <laughs> yeah. So there's actually some stuff going on here. Um, the big one to me, and this just happened today, was micro... And I've been waiting for this, right? So one of the big pluses of the Xbox platform is backward compatibility. So this is promise that Microsoft will try to bring forward as much of your library as it can to each new console generation. Um, so on Xbox, it started in Xbox One time frame, but in Xbox... Series X and S today, you have some selection of original generation Xbox games, uh, a big selection of Xbox 360 games, and then the, basically the full collection of Xbox One games are all available to you. So anything you bought uh, digitally, it comes up automatically in your library. You can install them on your console. You can use them. That's great. But going forward, I mean, the volume platform for Xbox in the future someday is not going to be a console. It's probably going to be the streaming service, which is confusingly called Xbox Cloud Gaming, which is today also confusingly only a feature of um, Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, right? Uh, which is that $15 a month thing. So does, that, does backward compatibility come to this platform? The answer is yes. And that makes total sense because technically you're running these things in an Xbox One in the cloud right now. Um, but uh, today they just announced the first 16 games. It's a bunch of... Um, uh, familiar titles, uh, a couple of Fallout games, Gears of War games, Cameo, which is from the original uh, launch set for the Xbox 360, if I remember correctly, Perfect Dark, Perfect Dark Zero, Elder uh, Scrolls games, Viva Panada, that's another game from the 360 launch uh, selection. And some of these games have touch controls enabled, which means you can just play them right on the screen of your mobile device, which is really cool. 
All of them support, obviously, a controller, which you can clip on or whatever. So I think this is going to be the first of many such announcements. I think we're going to see many, many more of these backward compatible games come forward to uh, what used to be called xCloud, which, like I said, has a goofy name now, but um, Xbox Cloud Gaming, as we call it. Um, last, I think it was last Thursday, last week anyway, sometime last week, uh, Microsoft held its first ever Twitch gaming event, uh, which is an ID at Xbox Showcase, which is a independent game uh, unit that Microsoft has. And they, I thought they were going to be over 100. I think they're planning over 100 new games over the next year. They announced, I think, 60-something of them, and then 20-plus of them will launch day and date on Xbox Game Pass as well. Because, again, you know, this is the new promise with Xbox Game Pass. Um it's not really worth going through the list of games because they're independent games and you've not really heard of most of them. Although Hello Neighbor is a big one and there's going to be a sequel to Hello Neighbor coming out later this year. And that's yeah, one of those that games. One. That's kind of fun. Yeah, that's yeah. a good game. Uh, Stalker 2, I guess. That's so Stalker, I guess, is another one. So it's kind anyway, of related to Hello Neighbor. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. And um, <laughs> if you uh, made fun of Apple for releasing a $550 pair of headphones, uh, well, I got news for you. Um, <laughs> Bang & Olufsen is releasing a $500 pair of headphones for the Xbox uh, for some reason in April. Um, so obviously Dolby, Atmos, you know, active noise cancellation. Why are they for the Xbox as opposed to just... Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I, really, I have it's no not, idea why anyone would... It doesn't do even have Xbox this. branding on it, but but you're saying... It, it is literally, yeah, huh. an Xbox headset. Yep. I know. I don't even see a microphone. I, is it built in one of those? It does have a microphone. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's probably like the one that's on um, the Surface headphones, where even though you, all you see is the two dial, like there's actually headphones as well. It's not just uh, yeah. earphones. Yeah. It's on the headphone, in other words, the microphone. Yeah. And uh, if you buy it at Best Buy, you can spend another 200 bucks on uh, product protection. So, well, you there know, you go. It's like, uh, it's like a mortgage now. There you go. It's uh, made of lamb skin. <laughs> And, bam and bamboo. Jeez. I yeah, I don't know. Uh, it's basically a Tesla for your ears, I guess. I <laughs> there you go. It's very strange. There you go. It's a Tesla for your ears. Now, how many would you pay? Yeah, I don't get it. But anyway, um, it's what is it? It's March thirty first as we record this. So tomorrow's April first, and actually, as of today, the first two games in the next set of games with gold game titles are now available to people who are Xbox Live Gold subscribers. Um, none of these are particularly interesting to me personally, but, uh, Vikings, <laughs> I can't even see, I can't read the box. Wolves of Midgard, of course, uh, which is an Xbox one title and then dark void, which is an Xbox 360 title are both now available as of today. Uh, if you are a gold subscriber and then truck racing championship and hardcore uprising, <laughs> I've literally never heard of any of those games, but there you go. Um, and then finally, you know, uh, one of the things I really like about Xbox, one of the many things, is they have this thing called Xbox Design Labs. And I've done this where you, you go in and you design your own controller. You can c determine the color of every little bit and piece on it and all that kind of stuff. You can put a little, uh, you know, saying on there, your name or something. And uh, we don't have that right now for the Xbox Series X and S, although it's coming soon. Microsoft said they were going to shut it down for several months so they could retool it for the new type of controllers. But... In the meantime, in addition to the white and black controllers that ship with the consoles and then separately, over time they've been releasing kind of colorful new controllers and um, they just announced two more of those. So there's an electric volt version, which is like, uh, uh, what is it? This one is green. Which one is this one? Yeah, kind of a lime green kind of a color. And then there's a Daystrike Camo Special Edition, which is a, ca a camo with uh, black and red and whatever. And, you know, it's like something my out thing, of the but game Plague. Yeah, it's kind of <laughs> right. spreading over the surface. Yeah, right. right. Um, yeah, it's like dipped in blood. So yeah. oh, maybe that's the 60, point. Yeah, yeah, sixty-five, sixty-nine dollars, depending on which one we're talking about. Um, the electric volt version will ship at the end of April, and the other one is coming in the beginning of May. Now these aren't so. the elite. No, no, but you know when you think about the new generation Xbox controllers, they take on a couple of things that are kind of inspired by the controller. You don't have the ability to swap out all the bits and all that kind of stuff, but or add the paddles. But, you know, a little grippier. Um, that's about it. <laughs> a yeah. little grippier. I don't know. You still, they're nice. You still would recommend, if you can afford it, they're expensive, getting the elites, right? Um, 
I don't have the new Elite controller, so my only my problem is I'm you know like the gorilla in the Samsonite commercial. I'm kind of yeah. like that guy. Hard on the, hard on it, are you? Is that yeah? So like I I drop. I'm clumsy. I drop them. I've I've sent like an Elite controller. It's like um, back when phones used to be made of plastic and the back would pop off and there was a battery. I used to drop my phone. It would explode into three different pieces and I would put it all back together and turn it out. It was fine. And my Elite controller was like that, except it's like 27 pieces. So when it hits the floor, it's like it's like a Lego set flying all over the floor. So um, mine's broken. So I just use regular controllers now. But I, I actually, I have to say, like the Xbox Series X and S controller, I I think those are great. So even if you have an Xbox One, it might be uh, might not be a horrible idea to grab, just grab one of those. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Nice. A lot less expensive. Yeah. Yeah. And you're right about the parts. <laughs> I have. Yeah, no, I know. like the idea of it. I mean, yeah. it, and it felt nice. You know, yeah. it felt um, quality. It was you could feel the quality of it. Yeah. It was a nice controller, but couldn't survive Hurricane Paul. Sorry. Mm -mm. <laughs> uh, I think this would be a good time. I'm especially looking forward to the cocktail <laughs> for the uh, right. for the back of the book. We yeah. So um, we begin the back of the book. <laughs> <laughs> With we begin the back of the book. <laughs> we begin the back of the book with Paul Thorat and his <laughs> tip of the week. Go ahead, Paul. I'm a joke. Guys. All right, so <laughs> literally joked about screwing that up. And that's okay. It's fine. It's good. <sighs> uh, sorry about that. Um, every year, <laughs> Microsoft has a spring sale right at the Microsoft Store. Um, this year, we don't have any stores to go to, so you can do it online. But um, there's a bunch of stuff going on there, but I kind of focused on the PCs. Um, you should go check out the sale page. Just go to, well, actually go to where is it? Micro, is it Microsoft store.com or just Microsoft, Microsoft.com slash store. <laughs> so, but, uh, anyway, you'll see the sale there and there's a bunch of, um, uh, pretty good deals on PCs, right? So up to $800 back off, I should say, sorry, on Surface Laptop 3, right? Which is probably going to be released pretty soon with Surface Laptop 4, but, uh, great computer, um, four hundred sixty dollars up to four hundred sixty dollars off of certain Surface Pro Seven bundles, meaning a Surface Pro Seven in the type cover. Um, five hundred dollars off select PCs, up to five hundred dollars off select gaming PCs. On and on and go. So, if you're in the market for a PC, um, yeah. Does this uh, you, every time I see things like this, I go, oh, they must be. This is the end of the line, right? They're just continuing these. Yeah. Well, is that so fair. Yeah, I mean, it's, there's that element for sure. I mean, Surface Pro Seven is about eighteen months old now, and actually, Surface Laptop Two, Three might be that old too. But these are still viable computers. Um, they actually do have a, a sale every spring. Um, so, and there are other, there are other things I didn't mention some of the other stuff. So there's like uh, lots of cash back with qualified trade ins on smartphones. That's you can nice. buy a Samsung a Galaxy Fold or a Samsung uh, whatever whatever the new Samsungs are. Four hundred dollars off in Surface Duo. There's a Game Pass Ultimate, the one dollar deal you can get all the time. There's lots of stuff. There's games, you know, all kinds. Of, I did, I'm just mentioning some of the hardware, Worth checking gaming, you know, it accessories. Out. That's the yeah. point, I guess. Yeah, yeah. And it's not it's all just stuff. Surface stuff either. So no, it's just the only thing I care about. So you can get <laughs> Galaxy Buds Plus oh, for forty forty dollars yeah. off. Yeah, yeah. If you're into that kind no, of thing, I don't care. Tip of the week we number apps. two. Yeah, this is the more substantive one. I thought this was interesting. Um, I don't know if you folks remember this, but last I want to say it was January last year. I had fully switched to Microsoft Edge. You know, many months before. And I had that experience, which everyone has these days, this is the Google experience, where you're you're looking up something uh, somewhere, and then you start seeing ads for the thing everywhere, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And this happened, it was like an email-based thing. Like, I clicked, it, it was like a New Balance sneaker, if I remember correctly, a New Balance sneaker email, clicked on it, went to the New Balance website, and then for like the next week, New Balance ads everywhere. And I was like, I thought part of the point of Edge was that they, they talk about this tracker blocking thing that's built into it. You can, like, there's, the, you know, like, default, there's, like, a strict version, whatever the three versions are. And so I started looking into this, and what I realized was the the tracking, the tracker blocking stuff in Edge or in any browser can only block some of the stuff. Well, you really need an extension. And um, I settled, uh, I think since, I don't know if I did this at the time, but I've been using Privacy Badger recently is one such extension. 
Uh, but DuckDuckGo makes an extension for this as well. And this week they just published a thing where they're saying, hey, you know, unless you use, well, they didn't really talk about the browsers where this does work. So I should say, if you have Brave, you probably don't have to do anything. Like Brave just does this. Um, but other browsers, well, or like something like Tor maybe or whatever, but most mainstream browsers, you have to install an extension to actually prevent web-based tracking. And uh, DuckDuckGo, which is, uh, you know, obviously makes a, an online search engine, has such an extension. It's available across platforms. So it's Chrome, Firefox, Edge, Safari, and uh, they have their own web, uh, mobile web browser as well, which has this functionality built in. And, and the, the basic, what they're saying is what I experienced, which is if you're just using a web browser, you're getting tracked. Like you're not blocking everything, no matter how strict you set it. Uh, you need an extension. You need this thing. You need these things to be blocked before the web browser does anything with a web page. And then there are other advantages to this because when you're blocking stuff, right, um, it's faster, right? The web works faster because you're not loading as much stuff. Um, there are there's always the uh, the danger that you might uh, block too much and the web st starts to break a little bit. Um, and of course, you can enable or disable on a site by site basis uh, as you need to. But um, this is something I think. Everyone should be using some kind of an extension. It doesn't have to be the DuckDuckGo one necessarily, uh, but you should be using some kind of an anti-tracking uh, browser. I extension. use uBlock Origin, which is an ad yeah. blocker, but I'm going to guess it does a lot of tracking blocking. Well. Yeah, a lot of um, like Brave because of the way Brave works by default, it actually blocks most ads just out of the gate, mm -hmm, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and because that's where a lot of the tracking comes from. Um, and then I think I bet these. Um, I also I use an ad blocker as well, but I suspect. Just, yeah, uBlock Origin or um, uh, Privacy Badger. Pro There's probably some element of ad blocking to any of these things um, just because that's one of the, you know, it's blocking stuff. So that's going to be the first thing that gets blocked, I would imagine. Yeah, yeah. So if you're worried about Google or Facebook, you should be. Um, this is how you can stop them. Now we go to Mary Jo Foley for the Enterprise pick of the week, how to get tracked better. <laughs> Just, Damn you, Mary jo. Just kidding. <laughs> well, this isn't about tracking, uh, but it is about embedding various kinds of services in your app. So if you're a developer and you've been interested in potentially using some of the kinds of app services that Microsoft uses itself, you now can do this. And the way you can do this is through something called Azure Communication Services, ACS. If you know what Twilio is, you know what ACS is pretty much. Um, ACS services that you can now embed in your apps because they're generally available include things like chat, SMS, um, PSTN telephony, calling, voice, video calling. There's a whole slew of them that they're not free, obviously, but Microsoft's enabling enabling you to embed these directly into your own apps. And if you're wondering how, how well established are these and how tried and true are they, this is the underlying platform, ACS, that powers Microsoft Teams. So yeah, yeah. that makes sense. It works. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so this the news around this is it's generally available, ACS is, as of today. GA. GA, baby. GA, baby. <laughs> um, and then there's another one. Two there is an, picks another enterprise pick. Yes. Um, so last summer, in the height of the pandemic, Microsoft announced this thing they called the Digital Skills Initiative. And they said, our goal is to enable 25 million people to get access to digital skills through our properties like LinkedIn Learning and GitHub. Um, they surpassed that goal. They say they've tra now trained through this program 30 million people worldwide. And this week they extended this program so that if you want to take these free classes that they have for the 10 most in-demand IT, IT related positions, they're going to be free through the end of calendar 2021. Hmm. So if you're wondering what, what kind of uh, courses are these, these are th for things like software developers, sales reps, help desk pros, financial analysts, graphic designers. They're, they're real world kinds of jobs. And 
uh, Microsoft's offering all these things through this dig this extended digital skills initiative um, for free. They're also offering through this program low cost certification. So if you've been wanting to get a Microsoft certification, now would be a great time to do that. Uh, and they also announced a couple of new pieces of software and services, like there's a career coach now coming to Microsoft Teams that's meant for higher education students who want to access some of the things around LinkedIn skills graph um, so that you can actually have a customized coach help you figure out where you want to target your career path coming out of school. Uh, and it, one, one other one that when we were talking about LinkedIn earlier in the show, they announced a new co video cover story feature for LinkedIn. Um, so if you're somebody looking for a job and you're like, you know what, I, I would look really a lot better to recruiters if I could just explain myself and I'm not there in person, you can now have a video snippet right at the top of your profile on LinkedIn that says, hey, I'm Paul Thorat. I happen to have written the Delphi Bible. You want to <laughs> hire me. And you can put it right in your LinkedIn profile. Nice. <laughs> Paul, so, yeah, there, you can't. There, I could. <laughs> Please don't so, yeah, if you're not Paul Thorat. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I'd appreciate right. it if, if you're, you're not rest Paul on your own Thorat, laurels. Yeah, you might want to do your own videos. <laughs> Just yep. saying. Hi, I'm yeah. your name here. Exactly. <laughs> right. I wrote the book. Your name of book your here. Your name of book here. Yeah. <laughs> It's right, the, but I, I think it's really great um, if, because these aren't just like really, th these aren't skimpy courses. They're like whole career path type courses where if you're, say you want to learn how to be a graphic designer, you can go in and get access to this for free. So yeah. it's a great time if you've been putting this off and you're thinking I should retool or learn a new skill or retrain, this is the time to do it because you can do it for free. True, true. Yep. A great time to be a learner. It is. All the learnings are yours. They are for free. For free. <laughs> so really, there's got to be a catch. I want to thank Microsoft for undermining our sponsors with the previous two tips. Uh oh, so <laughs> really? Well, it's oh, okay. No. It's okay. It's a it's a good world. There's lots of <laughs> uh, lots of choices out there. I won't. There are a lot of choices. Yeah, that's out there. that's how it works. It's good to have choices. It is. Um, and speaking of choices, I choose Peter Rabbit's downfall. <laughs> what is that? Right. Yeah, I got a fun. So um, this is a t this is a Stephanie's favorite cocktail. I'm trying to find. It's called something like "If Nana Only Knew," and this is based on uh, our friend, uh, a neighbor, a friend of ours, uh, has a, a grandma named Nana who sends him and every other relative he has a, a giant crate of uh, citrus from Florida like every oh, month. Oh, you, you mentioned this. Yes. Yeah. Yes. This so nice. <laughs> um, he, you know, he texts everyone in the circle and says, hey, I got another metric ton of grapefruits or whatever. Make something with it. Yeah. Yeah. So my wife is always the one who wants all this stuff because she loves grapefruit and vodka. So in a uh, uh, cocktail, sorry. And um, uh, she often like juices everything and gives the juice to other people in the circle, whatever. But that's nice. So she made this uh, drink called if Nana only knew, because Nana has no idea this is what we're using the grapefruit for. I but think you mentioned, you've mentioned that in previous episodes. Yeah, yeah. So what she wanted to do now that the winter's ending, like a spring is happening here, um, she wanted to make a spring version of it. And um, Mary Jo inquired this morning if we had any kind of Easter type cocktail. Of and she do. said that's perfect. So I could I was working on the spring version of this thing. I'll call it Peter Rabbit's Downfall. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's based on the, if Nan only knew. So it's two parts grapefruit juice, uh, two parts vodka, one part basil or mint syrup, uh, one part lemon. If you if, if you follow any of my wife's stuff, cocktail stuff, is you'll notice a lot of grapefruit, a lot of lemon juice. This is she her. loves her is, citrus. Where, where she's yeah. kind of settled in. Yeah. Uh, ginger bitters are optional. And I didn't know white. there was such a thing. I'm going to get some ginger mm. bitters. That sounds good. Yeah. Um, you just basically shake it all together, uh, froth uh, without ice to froth the egg white. Um, and then she says, you can garnish this with lemon, slice, mint, basil leaf, or a peep. Put a peep on top. <laughs> this peep so little cute. guy who's floating around like in a bathtub. <laughs> a bathtub so of gin. Mm -hmm. That's good. That sounds yep. good. Peter Rabbit's It does downfall. sound good. I can't, uh, good. I think because I'm on a statin, I'm on Lipitor, mm -hmm. oh, I don't yeah. think I can do you grapefruit. You can have grapefruit, right? Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, boy. Yeah. What about other citruses? Yeah. 
I do other so citruses. So is it just grapefruit? It's just too... Just grapefruit, which is weird. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Something it, it does something with your um, liver. I mean, obviously, yeah, like an orange... Liver. What about like a red grapefruit? It does. Actually, Still everything Paul drinks does something with your liver. It does. It makes it worse. <laughs> yeah, it, it keeps, it keeps right. your medicine right there. Oh, is that <laughs> it? So right. I won't be doing the grapefruit, right. but... Okay. No. Well, I'll I be, think this would be good with orange. It sounds like... I do, too. It would be sweeter. Carrot, carrot, yeah. And maybe you could lay, like lay off some of the other syrup or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Grapefruit. So you don't have a pro What about lemon? You don't have an issue? No, it's no. Just, uh, not that I know just grapefruit. of. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Interesting. Uh, grapefruit contains... Uh, uh, okay. It's complicated. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's complicated. I would ask your physician. but uh, yeah. So I'm not yeah. making a recommendation, but grapefruit has a chemical in it that uh, yeah. makes you can't metabolize some statin medi medications. Oh. Well, you don't want that. You don't want that because then you get a higher... No. It's only for actually. I guess I can. It doesn't affect Lipitor, so I guess I can have grapefruit. Oh, there you go. It's only for uh, Lovastatin, Simvastatin. Is it, it only, all grapefruit? Like it, I, you know how there's like a red no, or ruby lot, grapefruit that's sweeter. Yeah. I just I just assumed that I couldn't do any grapefruit, but now that I'm looking, there's at a it, lot of medications that you can't you take with grapefruit. Yeah, got to pay yeah. attention. Hmm. Yeah. Um, but a reasonable, a little bit of grapefruit in a cocktail, probably okay. But again. Ask your physician. <laughs> yeah, my physician really likes the uh, cocktail really question. So, yeah. Hey, uh, Doc, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm eating peanut, peanut butter <laughs> whiskey. Right. Is that all right? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, right? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, can you get off the floor, please? Hey, doctor. Hi. So, with that Peter Rabbit cocktail, Peter Rabbit's yep. downfall, what a great name. It is. It's awesome. I think you should replace the grapefruit juice with carrot juice if you really want to oh, honor, interesting. honor interesting. the rabbit. Oh, oh that would right. be interesting. You could just garnish it with that fake grass you put in an Easter basket. You know, yeah, there you go, and inside. a little peat floating on top. <laughs> <laughs> yep. We do this show uh, every Wednesday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1800 UTC, live stream at twit.tv slash live if you want to watch it happen live. If you're doing that, chat in the chat room because they're live too, irc.twit.tv. After the fact, on-demand versions of the show available at the website, twit.tv slash dub dub. There's a YouTube channel dedicated to Windows Weekly. And, of course, your podcast app is a great way to find the app, uh, find the uh, program, download it, automatically subscribe and download. That'll save you some time. And, by the way, if there's a place to leave a review, please do. We appreciate it. Paul Therott is at therott.com. That's his site. Become a premium member for the real goodness hidden inside. <laughs> the mm. the nuggety center it's of like the site. It's like a Cadbury egg. The best <laughs> part's the cream filling. <laughs> right. uh, his books are at leanpub.com. Are you are you actually working on this new volume? Or so, yeah, so actually I, I, I have been working a lot on updating the entire book for 20H2. Um, I am about four chapters away from being done. Um, so it's getting close. I, I really hope to get this done before the end of March. It's going to be longer, but, um, you're still on yeah, the field so, guide to windows. 10. Yes. But once that's done, so, um, making the transition to 21 H1 is going to be easy because there's nothing there and that's great. But the bigger problem is going to be in the future. Um, but yeah, I have some other things, uh, that I might be doing after that, but. It's a, is it a cocktail recipe book? <laughs> that would be more than um, welcome. I no, think. but I keep telling my wife that she needs to yeah. do this in book form. Yeah. 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 Or just video, TikTok videos. Right. Honestly, <laughs> that's hot. No. I, you know, yeah. my son now does TikTok cooking videos, and I look at them, and every, every single oh, wow. one of them I want to eat. <laughs> that's it's like, good. wow. That's I said, Henry, why don't you ever cook that for me? Sure. But maybe someday... I mean, um, I am paying for the internet after all. After just, all, that's right. <laughs> just a thought. Books at leanpub.com. Mary Jo Foley's at allaboutmicrosoft.com, her ZDNet blog. Are you doing anything for Easter or, uh, you know, taking some no, time not off? Really. Nothing. Yeah, me neither. Yeah. I'm working this weekend. Yeah. We are, but as I said, we're going to be away next week because. Uh, yeah. So when do you when do you, when do you what's the schedule? Like Monday you? through Friday, we're just going to go yeah. to Calistoga nice. with a kid because he's you know he's on spring break and. 
Yep. He's 18 now. I don't know if it really makes sense to take him anywhere. <laughs> He'll bring it was the last uh, trip I took with my parents. I was 18. Yeah, my, I think my, it's my father, literally to California. My father offered to put me on the plane and send me home. Yeah, <laughs> just, I think it's going to be kind of yep, like that. Just yeah. uh, we were done. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Michael will be here next week, I'm happy to say. Uh, I hope you will uh, enjoy next week's episode, and I will be back in two. Have a great Easter. Have a great week. You too. We'll see you in a, next yes. time on Windows Weekly. Bye-bye. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I am Ant Pruitt, and I want to tell you about my show, Hands on Photography, here on Twit TV. Each and every week, Thursday, that is, I'd like to sit down and share with you the best tips and tricks that are going to help make you a better photographer. And it's not always about Photoshop. It's not always about just having the biggest and baddest and bestest camera. It can be the simplest of things like leave your eye open when you're looking through the viewfinder. All of these simple tips can really help step your photography game up. So subscribe to the show today. That's twit.tv slash hop. And I look forward to talking to you soon.